In this tutorial, we'll cover the tools related to assembly. We generally use assembly to assemble different parts, solid parts that we have created in the previous tutorials. Okay, so let's start with a simple example. Okay. The first thing we'll do is create a few parts that we can use for this purpose. Okay, so. So first we select the front plane and create a new sketch. What we're going to do is let's say create a rectangle. Let's say the rectangle has a length of 120 millimeters and then a width of 30 millimeters, something like this. Okay using the center line let us create our next section so we'll create some holes uh, as we need to fasten this and i guess this will be 15 millimeters from this to this Okay, and now what we're going to do is create a linear pattern and select this. Okay, we want to have four more in a distance of let's say 30 millimeters. Sounds about right. And okay, so now we have what we needed. Now we will extrude this and make it. 10 millimeters. Oh, before that, we did we fix? No. We're gonna also fix the dimension of this, and um, this is gonna be 10. So we're just fixing the first one. Now this will adjust as we have created a linear pattern. Now go to the extrude boss, and we can make the thicknesses 10 millimeters. Okay. So this is the first part that we are gonna create. Let me save this. let me save it as part one okay let's create another part okay uh, again front plane uh, let's create something similar to uh, c-shape maybe okay uh, something like this okay so now what we're going to do we need to know the thickness oh, oh my bad and the length of it so let's say let's make it 40 50 and I guess this should be automatically adjusted and what we can do is add a thickness so let's stay of identities and we're going to select all this and we want to have it on the in, in the inside okay and make it let's say 10 10 should be fine what we're going to do is cap ends and make it lines something like this once done click ok and we can do the, the extrusion here for the extrusion, let's make it 30 millimeters. What I'm going to do is make it mid plane so I can reuse the plane itself. Okay, click OK and we're ready. Now we're going to select the surface here, right click on it and click the sketch. And now we're going to create a circle somewhere around here need to make sure the dimensions are right so what we're going to do is from this corner to the, the center it will be 15 right and from one corner to this one will be again 15 okay 
now that we know the location of it what we are going to do is and um, create an extrude cut and we're going to make it through all okay so now we have uh, our second part and let's create our last part that we're gonna need is oh, that reminds me did uh, I fixed yeah, I didn't fix it okay yeah let's re-edit it and do this and let's make it 10 so now we have everything ready okay this is how it looks like the next part we're going to create is going to be just a cylinder okay straightforward uh, that we will be using as for a pin as a pin so we know let's the, let make the dimension as 10 for this pin as we the holes we created for all the parts we're also 10 okay uh, and we're going to extrude it now the extruded length will be based on the thickness we want right um, what I'm thinking right now is making it as uh, 20 so 20 it is and then click OK and we can save it, save it as the pen okay so now we have all the necessary parts and we can start our main tutorial on the assembly okay for assembly when you go into solidworks and create a new file you ha will have these options till now we have been working on parts so we'll be working on assembly right now select the assembly and click ok as you have the other part files open in solidworks it will show up on the left to be imported on this assembly but in case you have just opened a new file you will see on the top that there is something called this insert component select that and go to the browse and select where all the files you have okay click open and now what you can do is select all three of this on the left property manager and put them on your screen now the first question is how many copies of them do you need okay so if you need to make multiple copies you can do so just by selecting them pressing the control button on your keyboard and pulling it away from the original one it will create an, a, a separate copy so if I'm gonna have to make a copy of it in assembly uh, I'm just gonna select it control button on my keyboard and create another copy same thing gonna, gonna be again just control and that's it now let's go to the assembly part so let's say we want to create uh, some pieces together let's say let me with two more of them and we're gonna see how they're assembled with one another for that what we need to use is called the mating tool okay select that the left property manager will appear where it will sh give you the first box which asks you to select the entities it can be a surface it can be an object depending on how you're using it can be an edge also now you have the standard maze which usually does uh, the job perfectly for you the mate is basically defining how in what relation the objects will be from one another uh, let's the plus if we select coincident which is by default always being selected if you select one surface with another one and so it will be coincident especially on the surface level so as you see I've selected this they are on the same surface now it have moved from its previous position and as we haven't as we haven't added any any additional constraint it you will be able to move it within the limit of this surface itself okay so if you're moving it no matter how you're moving it it is always maybe it will go at a dist longer distance but it will always be within the uh, same plane as this surface that we've selected when we're creating the mate okay you can constrain it further 
um, let's say you want to align this to here right so if I'm selecting this surface here and this surface here we're straightening it even more so now it's it's only able to move with the restraint of this surface and this surface so if we add a final surface to this one which is a third which is fully defining the constraint you will see it has just moved to that position now is it gonna work with this one no because the holes are not aligning this is not the perfect mate we are looking for we just wanted to look into the coincident one okay so if you want to delete some mates or some of the constraints you have created what you can do is just go on the left side upside down triangle select the constraints you have created right click on it and just delete them that's it and now it's again free to move along any axis or surfaces as you like okay let's go into the mate okay you can align different objects uh, based on if they are even, even if they are cylindrical or circular or a flat surface so let's say for example tangent relation if I'm selecting this cylinder here and this surface here I click OK now they are in a tangent relation and they will be able to move within the limit of surface can they go beyond yes they can same rule applies as we had on the coincident uh, that um, it will be within that parallel surface okay you can also apply uh, distance let's say for example if I'm saying that selecting this surface and this surface uh, and then I say that hey um, if you come here on the left you will have this option called distance select this one and say that hey um, the distance between these two will be 10 millimeters or let's say let's make it a little larger uh, 100 millimeters okay as you see it has moved now as you move you cannot ne no matter what constraints you add you will never be able to make this surface and this surface touch together because you have added this constraint of 100 millimeters in between them okay um, let's say let's make it smaller let's say we're making it 15 and you decided that hey the orientation of the object you have selected is not correct not right that basically you want it flipped so the surface of this and the inside surface of this has to be rotated what you can do is select this option called the alignment so if you select this one it will rotate back and move, move its position from there and you can just always select that one to, the, to go to the previous configuration okay so i'm gonna delete this relation here okay i'm not gonna worry about it at all so one thing that is important for when you're using the assembly tool is fixing one object so that you can work with respect to that one so if you see on the left manager you will see that one of them has f and other one has just a dashed line that means these are float objects you can move them around but if you see an f that means it's fixed no matter how you try it will not be moved and it's the best idea to always ha work with one base which is the most important one and connected with most of objects or you can use it as a starting point so now let's do some uh, um, assembly with this one if you go to the mate option again it's mostly these options that you'll be using the, another one is the coins concentric so if you have holes you can just select the surfaces as you see the concentric holes and then you can use them to your advantage as you see i've selected it it has aligned it concentrically and you can see the hole from one point to another point so once you have done it click ok okay next you can do just to make sure that they they are in contact you can select this surface and this surface here so now it is perfectly defined um, you, you can move it along this axis because of the concentric rule itself and you also have uh, it in contact with this surface let's let me do this 
again for the other one which is this and this one okay click ok you have the concentric rule but it is gonna move all along so what we're gonna do is create this surface select the surface here okay now let's say uh, we want to add a few more rules to it the rule what we want to add is we want to make sure that if this one moves this one moves at the same time so uh, one of the surfaces uh, or is moved to 30 degree angle this one also moves to a 30 degree angle but in the opposite direction so for that what we can do is add this rule called parallel combination so we can select this surface here and you can select the surface here and as you can see it has already aligned to one another and if you click ok now you are able to move one of them but the other one will also move in the opposite direction to keep those surfaces that we have selected parallel to one another okay and now that's just it as we will be only covering the basic ones of the myth so these are the only tools that you're going to need um, you can just for now let's complete this assembly and what we're going to do is select this surface and select this one and this one and click ok same is going to be here and here and we're gonna select this two here so now everything is aligned even if we're moving this uh, let me move now what we can do is cover the holes here again you wanna select the top surfaces together so that we, we, we're making sure that they're aligned there as you see the lint has covered that okay so let's select these two surfaces first and then the cylindrical ones and you can just continue to do so uh, till you think everything is aligned to your desire and that's it you have your final assembly now when you're working with assemblies there are two ways of completing any design one is top-down approach and another is bottom-down approach the one we have done here the as i was saying it will be the top-down approach where we have already created the parts and then we have assembled you can also do is a bottom-down assembly where you create one part as you're going through the assembly itself so you open the assembly format itself and you can always just select here upside down triangle and create a new part as you need and as you're moving and then you're creating one part at a time you can always start creating from the position of where you need a new part itself 